We are constantly hearing about how the environment is plagued by many problems. However, not many people are willing to make dramatic changes in their lifestyle to prevent problems like littering or pollution or even climate change. In this video, I discuss how some solutions of simple changes in our daily life can not only help the environment, but save money in the process. First, I'll talk about printer ink. When you type a document, do you consider how the words look on your screen? Which font do you use? A default font like Helvetica, or maybe the classic Times New Roman? Do you try to save paper by using a smaller size font? Or perhaps you use different styles like bold facing or italicizing? When you're done, you might print out your document. But have you thought about the amount of ink you're using? Choosing your font might seem trivial. But if we take a look at two identical documents but with different fonts, you can identify that the one in Comic Sans font uses much more ink than the one in Garamond. But if we zoom in to the letter E in both Comic Sans and Garamond fonts, this difference is a lot more apparent. In fact, Comic Sans uses about 35% more ink than Garamond. Ink is double the cost of French perfume. Consider the cost of printering for a large organization, for example, a school. I conducted a study on the effect of font type on my school's ink cost. I randomly selected teachers from my school for the experiment. I collected the handouts that they distributed during a full school week. I surveyed all the teachers in my school for their preferred font of use, and I analyzed the frequency of character used in the documents I collected. I modeled this frequency in a test document. I duplicated the test document for each of the fonts chosen by teachers. I used AppFill ink coverage software to analyze each test document. I computed the savings for switching to certain fonts and weighted them by frequency of the fonts used. I verified the AppFill software by comparing the masses of cutouts of enlarged letters in certain fonts. I concluded that by switching to Garamond font, my school district could save up to $21,000. In addition, switching to a more ink-efficient font would help reduce the detrimental impact of ink on our health and the environment. Now I'll talk about another corrosive household chemical, drain cleaners. I visited Allegheny County Sanitary Authority's open house for the past two years. I found that Alcosan plants don't check for household chemicals before discharging the processed sewage into the Ohio River. I tested Drano, Liquid Plumber, Drain Pro Gel, Value Time Drain Opener, Salt Water, and a combination of baking soda and vinegar for their effectiveness in clearing air blockage and their environmental impact. I did this by recreating the material that would be found in a drain blockage, soap scum, hair, toothpaste, shaving gel, and food particles. I inserted the blockage material into U-shaped cubes that would represent a pea trap in a sink. I conducted many experiments as shown in this diagram. These included different levels of blockage material, a no standing water blockage, and I also tested the quality of water after being exposed to drain cleaner. A few results that I found were that baking soda and vinegar cleared a blockage much quicker than the others. Also, after a reaction with the blockage material, baking soda and vinegar's pH stabilized to about 7. This is expected to be the least harmful of all the commercial drain cleaners. There's a dramatic drop in the graph of baking soda and vinegar's pH. This is when the reaction occurred and the blockage was starting to be cleared. Over my experiments, my results were fairly consistent. I also took a look at the cost of baking soda and vinegar as compared to the other commercial drain cleaners. As you can see, baking soda and vinegar is much less expensive than all of the commercial drain cleaners. Pennsylvania is ranked 7th worst in the country in terms of river pollution, but there's another aspect about water we must consider. The national water wastage for households alone is about 4.3 trillion liters of water every year. Where does this number come from? Well, faucets can develop leaks over time, and the wastage due to that is a lot more than we suspect. Also, even the most conscientious of us sometimes leave faucets running, or lights on, which leads us to another wasted resource, electricity. I created a device that monitors the flow of water and the status of lights using the Arduino open source prototyping platform. So potentially you could get an alert on your smartphone that you're wasting water or that you left your living room light on. 